This video outlines some basic teaching principles and illustrates how to apply them to teaching snowboarding. Remember, your number one goal in teaching snowboarding should be to create a safe, fun, and positive experience. The following skills and attitudes will help you to become a more effective instructor. Instructors must have credibility and be able to do as they say. Showing adequate knowledge of snowboarding techniques, equipment, and the sport in general will go a long way for gaining your students' trust. Students trying a new skill or attempting new techniques can become frustrated or anxious. When this happens, the instructor needs to be patient, tolerant, and supportive. Approximately 60% of all communication is altered in some way as a result of interpretation, misconception, or some other factor. To avoid confusion, make your messages as clear and concise as possible. As an instructor, you will be required to analyze the skills of your student and decide on the causes of difficulty. Based on this analysis, you will decide on changes that you can offer them to help improve their skills. The best instructors develop good leadership skills as a means of fostering a positive and memorable experience while learning to snowboard. Tailor the lesson to the needs of each individual in the group for the best results. In general, there are five principles of learning that influence how your students learn. The first is, telling doesn't ensure learning, which is one of the common errors made in teaching. Telling is not teaching, and it does not ensure learning. Students need time to practice and use the info you are giving them to really learn it. Which leads into the second principle, people learn by doing. The important factor here is the actual amount of time your students spend practicing the skills you're teaching them. Maximize their practice time by building in guided free ride or mileage time into your lesson. Allow students to make mistakes as long as you're there to suggest a correction before the next attempt. What people do first, they learn best. Focus on the technically correct method from the start because we remember best what we learn first. This explains why it's much easier to teach a beginner than it is to change the ingrained habits of a more experienced rider. Break your info down into small steps or building blocks. Then ensure understanding and comfort before going on to the next step. Offer feedback when you see something to correct rather than waiting until the end of the lesson. The sooner students receive positive, constructive feedback about their performance, the more valuable it will be. If the student has performed something correctly, tell them. They are more likely to repeat it correctly. All these principles are at work in any learning process. To be an effective teacher, we must constantly be aware of their influence on our students. Everyone has their own way of learning new skills. In general, there are a few types of learner. Keep in mind, no one is all one type. We will each be a mix, with a preference for one over the other. Cognitive learners, or thinkers, generally prefer to learn by reading, thinking, and discussing. They need to know the what, why, how, and where before attempting something new. Observational learners, or watchers, generally prefer to learn by observation of the instructor's demonstrations and through considerable repetition. Experiential learners, or doers, generally prefer to learn by trial and error. They're comfortable experimenting with different approaches until they find a style or technique that works for them. Consider the learning styles of each student as well as the content of the lesson when planning the most effective way to teach. Keeping in mind the various learning styles and principles of learning, 
we can now look at a specific technique called the training cycle, which will help ensure your lessons follow a clear format. The first step in the training cycle is the explanation. Here we give students a clear verbal picture of the skill or technique to be learned. Keep this part brief. Describe the what's, why's, and how's of the new skill. Try to use simple, non-technical language. This will get them up and riding sooner. The second step in the cycle is to demonstrate the skill to the students. In short, do what you said you were going to do in your explanation. Follow your explanation closely. Ensure that your demonstration matches the writing ability level of your students. Also, choose your demo area carefully so everyone can see you. The third step is to have students try the skill you have demonstrated. Remember, they learn far more from actually doing than they do from simply watching and listening. Maximize their writing time by setting simple and specific goals in your explanation and using all available terrain. The fourth step is to provide feedback on students' trial by analyzing and improving the student's performance. Start with some positive reinforcement by pointing out a specific skill or movement that they are doing well. Then give them a goal or objective to work towards the next time they try it. Delivering feedback in this way will help to keep the student focused on what they will be trying next to make their writing better, as opposed to what they just did. Think of the training cycle as a wheel. Chances are that one revolution won't get you very far. We need to continue around the cycle until our goal or objective for the lesson is achieved. When teaching new skills to new snowboarders, safety is our number one concern. Breaking the info down into smaller, achievable chunks will help to reduce any consequences and also set the student up for success. A step-by-step -step progression helps to calm apprehensive students and help to build their confidence. Remember, your building block progression isn't set in stone. We must assess the student's performance at each step and decide if we can move ahead, stay in practice, or even take a step or two back in the progression.